everyone, Kate here, and this week I'll be sharing with you some various historical tips and tricks for keeping your sewing room or crafting space under control. I focused mainly on the Edwardian era through about the late teens, early 1920s, and while most of these ideas are sewing specific, many will translate to other forms of needlecraft if sewing isn't quite your thing. For some of these ideas, I'll be reading excerpts directly out of the historical sources, while other ideas I'll be summarizing into short, usable suggestions. Just before we begin, a little bit about my space. I am lucky enough to have a dedicated workroom, which holds most of my crafting supplies, with the exception of my upholstery tools, which are in the basement, and my knitting supplies, which are in my bedroom, because that's where I do my knitting. This room is currently a bit of a work in progress. Let me know if you want to see a full sewing room tour when it's finally done. I'm going to paint it and get some new furniture and such. It's likely going to take a while, but I'm, I'm making progress. <laughs> Maybe this year. <laughs> Just as today, many women in the past wouldn't have had a dedicated sewing room. A corner of a bedroom, preferably a guest room, was often used instead. To hide this dual use, women had all kinds of ways of disguising their sewing tables. The easiest way was simply to put a cloth over top and try to make it look like a table. But another option that I see suggested quite often was to put a shelf or a board above the table and a mirror over top. This way, it could be used as a vanity table with a curtain or cloth hiding the sewing machine below. I wouldn't bother trying to hide anything as gorgeous as an antique sewing machine, but I feel like this could still work well for hiding a modern machine. Just put it on a table or a cart with wheels and pull it out when needed. I really wish I could find the book which talked about having basically cupboards all around the room, and then when you opened it, it transformed the use of the room. Like one contained, I think it was children's toys and things meant for visiting grandchildren. Another cupboard contained a fold-out ironing board, a sewing machine, and some storage for all your sewing goods. And then there was another cupboard that opened and turned the room into something entirely different. Oh, I feel like it was a 1910s book, but I just couldn't find the article again. Confined buttons on linen strings and sets. They are more likely to be used if their number is evident at a glance. Women had all kinds of ingenious ways of adding storage in their workspace. The most common type of project storage was either a sewing bag or a basket, of which there were a variety of design possibilities. Usually, they contained several side pockets for keeping notions, needles, threads, etc., as well as a central section for the project itself. This is particularly beneficial if you are hand sewing, as these bags or baskets make it easy to transport your needed material to wherever you happen to be working, whether that's on the sofa, outside on the porch, or even to a friend's house. This type of bag seems to have become less popular as sewing machine use increased, but I still think it's a good idea for any handwork projects, including things like embroidery and knitting, or for mending. I do love a cute mending bag. I'm predominantly a machine sewist myself, so I keep all my sewing tools and general supplies separate, but I do use homemade baskets for keeping works of progress together. It keeps everything neat and tidy, as well as preventing project bits from getting lost or mixed in with an entirely different project. Speaking of sewing on the go, I love a sewing screen. I keep all my tools in a rolling cart, which is kind of the same idea, but I love how you could simply turn the screen around or fold it up when not in use and hide all your tools easily. I think it would make things much less visually cluttered. One of these days, I'm going to build myself a sewing screen. For some more extra storage, what about adding a drawer to the underside of a chair? 
Sometimes you actually see sewing stools that have built-in storage. I do actually have a vintage sewing stool. This one's sort of more mid-century. Uh, I don't use it at my machine, but it is useful for storage, although it's currently a bit of a mess of old art supplies. Many housekeepers have stowed away an old-fashioned bureau. This is what I did with mine. I unscrewed the cumbersome top and had the bureau moved to my sewing room. The large lower drawer I use in place of a scrap bag and to hold new material. All the pieces of material left over I roll up and tie, placing them in this drawer. When I'm looking for them, it is not necessary to turn out the whole collection. I see it as soon as I open the drawer. The other large drawer I keep for unfinished work. When I am sewing, I place the work in here out of the way. Ironing day. The things needing a stitch are laying in here so that when I can snatch a moment, everything is in readiness. The two small drawers hold scissors, thread, button boxes, tape, and all sewing utensils. Piece bags, which suggest their contents, may be made as follows. For the white pieces, make a bag of white cotton or muslin. For the woolen pieces, a bag of outing flannel. A gingham bag will suggest wash goods. A bag of cambric will be good for pieces of lining. And one of silk for silk pieces. These bags may be hung from hooks in either the sewing room closet or the storeroom, and much hunting for pieces will be avoided by adopting this systematic method. A colored ribbon tied to scissors will save many minutes otherwise spent in looking for them, especially if they are used by children who forget where they have left them. A bit of ribbon is almost sure to show when the scissors have hidden under sewing, papers, etc. Okay, this next one isn't technically organization, but I find it helps a lot with fabric management, so I've included it. A thousand and one household hints suggest placing brass tacks along the edge of your sewing table at regular intervals to be able to quickly measure material. If you don't want to permanently puncture your table, you can always do what I've done and put a pencil mark on the edge instead. Mine is a one meter mark from the edge of the table, so I can quickly determine if I have enough material for a particular project or garment. This also makes sorting material faster if you happen to store by length. I do store my larger garment sized pieces together and then separate anything smaller than two meters by material type. Well, that's it for this week. If you have any ingenious storage solutions, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear them. Any scrap projects are appreciated too. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.